Hello. Now that we're all set up to malt, we can get a batch underway. I'm just going to walk through what components to turn on during what part of the batch. So, as you can see, we've got the large manual valve beneath the conical. And for most batches we run, we'll rinse the grain a few times with this arrangement. As I mentioned in the setup video, we just let the dirty water, perhaps with some sediment uh, in it, run out of the conical and to our floor drain before attaching a conical tank to our acro. This prevents overstressing the various filters and drain valve. Um, you'll place the grain on top of the false bottom and fill the tank with a hose from the top, agita agitate the grain manually, and sieve off any waste. Uh, you'll likely need to rinse several times. Um, and so now we move to the steep air rest assembly, which is the first assembly you'll use during malting. Um, so when we're ready to begin the steep, we'll fill the conical up with water using the garden hose sprayer until the grain is submerged at least a few inches. At this point, we can start our recipe schedule. I'll turn the knob for the drain valve, indicating I'd like the drain valve to turn on or open after a set amount of time. If I want to steep, to end eight hours after I start it, I'll set the drain valve timer to eight, press reset, and the clock will start. Meanwhile, throughout the steep, Acro oxygenates the water with an air pump, which you can set to turn on at different intervals. I simply turn the knob for the air pump and press reset on the controller to start the 15 minute each, 30 minutes total on off cycle. We have links to the timer and PID controller instructional videos to learn about setting different schedules, tolerances, and all sorts of fine-tuning options to customize your mold. Between drains, you will likely want to clean out the inline filter basket. If your grain is particularly dirty before air rest begins, you will want to clean the filter gasket in the conical as well. When I'm ready for air rest to begin and I know all the water is out of my conical tank, I'll turn the knob for the vessel valve which is the motorized valve that sits right below the tank. This opens up a pathway for the fan inside of your acro to blow air through the grain to both disperse CO2 and keep the grain bed cool. During air rest, you must also turn on the chiller pump and the chiller so that the fan can blow cool air. Whenever the chiller pump is on, ensure that you have a good flow rate in the glycol loop. You can check the flow rate by pressing run stop on this blue and white panel component and it should read your flow rate in liters per minute. After opening the vessel valve, I'll want to set my fan and fogger to controller. This setting will turn my fogger and fan on when the grain bed surpasses the temperature that I've set on my controller. Depending on your desired grain bed temperature, during early air rest, the grain bed will likely not get too hot and the fan and fogger might not need to turn on too frequently. The proper fan speed varies depending on the depth of the grain bed, but for a mid-sized batch of say 20 pounds, you'll want the fan set to about medium low for the air rest only. Kilning, for example, you'll want a fan set at high regardless of the batch size. So, to sum up, this is what your panel should look like during steep, and this is what your panel should look like during air rest. For the next minute or so, we're going to look inside of Acro so that we can better conceptualize what exactly is going on. For the steep, the interior components are simple. An air pump sits inside the Acro and will pump air into the conical through tubing, the air pump assembly, and the racking arm. When you're ready to drain the conical, a ball valve inside the acro turns on and lets the conical empty. Things get a bit more exciting with air rests. Here we can see the interior main duct with a fan behind it that blows air through our ducts and assemblies and reaches the grain bed. Acro has the ability to cool and humidify that air so that we can successfully regulate temperatures during air rest and germination. The fan's air intake is the on the lower left corner of your Acro's front side. The air immediately passes through coils filled with cold glycol to cool the air. Then, as you can see, there's a plastic T that joins the cold incoming air with the water vapor from our humidifier box gener generated using ultrasonic fog foggers. Our cooling system is a glycol flow loop cooled by a condensing unit. The condensing unit charged with refrigerant, sits on top of our other interior components and cools a copper coil inside this insulated tube. Inside here, glycol is pumped past that copper coil. A pump keeps the glycol flowing so it enters the insulated chiller barrel, is cooled by refrigerant, and then exits the barrel to go chill the incoming air from the fan intake coils. A temperature sensor inside our flow loop is connected to the PID controller labeled chiller temp 
So the condensing unit will be switched on when the glycol loop warms past a set temperature. We preset the temperature to 6 degrees Celsius, far clear of any icing issues, but sufficiently cool to reliably and quickly cool the grain bed. The glycol's freezing temperature is below water's freezing, so settings as low as 0 degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit are okay. Back to our malting overview. After our grain is as moist as we want it, usually between 38% moisture for the lightest Pilsner malts to 45% moisture for fully modified malts, I'll begin the germination period. To allow for greater airflow, I'll swap out the drain assembly for the basic stainless duct extender with the tri-clamp fitting on the end. No need for a filter gasket, we want the most airflow possible. After swapping out the duct, we're ready to start germination. We'll use the same components as air rest. The chiller and the chiller pump set on, of course the chiller only kicking in when the glycol gets too warm, and the fog fan and fogger set to controller, so that when the grain bed rises above its set temperature, the fan will blow cool, humid air through the grain bed. You'll want to monitor the grain bed throughout germination. At least once a day, but ideally twice, stop by and give the grain a few turns with your hand. Be sure to get down into the corners near the false bottom. If rootlets form without regular turning, barley will form tight clumps that make the drying process a bit less consistent. Perform acrospire counts and modification tests towards the end of your germination period, three to five days typically, to determine when you'd like to stop germination and begin the dry, dry down process. You can find more literature about modification tests, acrospire counts, completing a germination cycle on sproutlabs.com in our resources tab. When grain is sufficiently modified, you can go ahead and turn all components off. Detach the duct from the conical and tilt it all to the way to the side to allow full drainage of any liquid from the duct. Next, turn the fan to manual and set fan speed to high. Allow this to run one to two minutes in order to fully dry the heating element. Never turn the heating element on when there is water in the duct or moisture in the heating element. Now is the time to start the kilning schedule. Give the grain a good turn, reinsert the temperature probe into the grain bed, and turn the heating element on. Remember to restart the PID's ramp soak, otherwise you'll start in the middle of a cycle. Kilning temperatures and schedules are all about flavor and there's a wide variety of directions you can go. The heater is equipped with a ramp soak PID controller to make detailed heat schedules and will turn the heater on or off depending on how hot the interior of the air duct is. Remember with the heater, the PID is made to ramp from one temperature to the next throughout the time period. So if at a given time you'd like to go from 40 degrees Celsius for two hours to 50 degrees for five hours, you must create three time steps. The first 40 degrees set to 120 minutes, the second 40 degrees set for a short amount of time like two minutes, and the third set for 50 degrees for 300 minutes. That two minute second step will ramp the temperature from 40 to 50. Like I mentioned earlier, we have links to the timer and PID controller instructional videos and um, user manuals, data sheets uh, to learn about different schedules, tolerances, and, and the other fine tuning options that they offer. Once you're done kilning, turn the heater off and run the fan until you've cooled the grain and the system down. With that, you should have a completed batch of malt. Finally, a note about temperature sensor placement. There are three temperature sensors you're using during malting. The duct temperature lets you know your air on temperature. The chiller temperature lets you know the glycol temperature and the grain temperature represents the grain in your conical. A grain bed has inherent temperature gradients across it. During cooling, the bottom layer will cool first and push heat up into the higher layers. During kilning, the bottom layer heats up first and sends moisture into the top layers. If you place your temperature probe deeper than the top inch of the grain during germination, you can throw off cooling. If it's in the middle of the grain bed, the system will stop cooling when the bottom half is cooled, but the top half of the grain bed will still likely be warm. During kilning, the temp sensor should give you a data point, but doesn't control the process. You can place it deep down to know how the bottom is heating up or leave it on top. On top, the temperature won't start rising until moisture levels in the entire batch have dropped off significantly. Use your duct temperature as a reference during germination and kilning. It allows you to validate that you're blowing cool or hot air up into the grain bed. With that information, you should be good to start a batch of malt and uh, be sure to look 
at sproutlabs.com for various other resources on um, getting the best recipes and happy malting.